Autobots Transform. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm George, 80s Transformer fan. Today, I'm doing another Masters of the Universe tour review. It is Club Grayskull slash Filmations. Merman, this is his slip cover. He's packaged inside slip cover. It is the Jawbridge Castle Gray Skull. At the top, you can see the windows to Gray Skull. We've seen this before. You can see the side of the castle here. The back of the box is Master of the Universe and Super 7. And the other side of the castle, removing the slip cover inside is Merman. Merman filmation style. He is packaged with his sword, a version of his classic style sword. Some mystery gun. I don't know what it is. Uh, don't remember and the staff that hurl that holds the crimson pearl and uh without further ado what oh wait turn around to the back of the box and on the back of the box is snake mountain it says master of the universe merman here is a picture of the animation merman and he has a brief bio down here i'll try to hold it steady so if you want to pause and read it you can pause and read it i think i have it all in frame for you Anyway, we're going to get this review cracking. Get it cracking because he can. Could, yeah, okay. Anyway, so uh, slice the top of the box. See if we can pop Merman out. And the thing about Merman, in, inside of the packaging is the stairwell inside of Castle Grayskull with a couple of torches burning, which is pretty sweet. I've said it before, I'll say it again. They didn't have to do it, but it is sweet. And now that the bubble is gone, you have like open windows here. So uh, anyway, the episode where he had this little staff that he's packaged with that contains the Crimson Pearl, um, it was a pretty dark episode. On this episode, while I get him out, uh, he was going to sacrifice the sorceress to the monster Baku. Baku. And when he couldn't uh, sacrifice the sorceress, he was going to sacrifice Tila. So, uh, man, Merman was a pretty dark guy trying to make sacrifices. Now, how uh, how was the sorceress raising Tila in a damn nest? So on that episode, the sorceress had her baby Tila, and then, back then, the, the baby was uh, the sorceress' baby. Now, in the storyline, in the classic storyline, the... Tila is her actual, her clone or something. I like the little baby story better. This merman out of the packaging looking kind of pale. I'm gonna get his sword out. It is a take on his vintage sword and his classic sword. Get his little gun out. And the staff that contains the pearl, the crimson pearl. Anyway, first things first, we're going to take a look at Merman, bring him a little bit closer. And funny thing is, the way they got this paint job, when I first saw it in packaging, I thought he was like kind of pale and I didn't know how much I was going to like it or if I was going to like it or not. But it makes him look fishy. I don't know. It just, it's like it just works with him. And he was one of the guys I was dying to get because his head scope was a lot different than his vintage figure and his classic figure scope. Scope, the scope and I used to wonder why they didn't pack in a different head when they first made the classics uh merman because uh, a lot of guys they, they they catered to a lot of fans by giving them the 2000x head or the uh, original a back head or just concept heads and I always wondered why he never received this head I saw people customize them a lot of those customs look great but it was done in like a darker green it wasn't like this pale green but it looks great out of the packaging. The paint on the head is pretty good. The eyes look insane. He looks like he, a deer caught in the headlights. Like <laughs> the mouth and the teeth look pretty cool. Um, the little padding is a little warped out of my packaging, but it is very, very soft. So uh, if I apply some heat, I probably get it to go wherever I want to. It. His armor is very, very soft. I don't believe it's removable without uh, damaging it or tearing it up and having to glue it back. It's just stuck on there. Uh, taking a look at his paint. I saw in the packaging he had a little bleed up here, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Coming down to his little trunks. They go all, they wrap all the way around between his legs. And coming down to his boots. 
Are these boots? Yeah, they're boots. His boots and his feet, he has like the demon feet, or in this case, the fish feet. He has some holes for a stand under there. So I'm going to get right to this guy's articulation. Merman head should be on a ball joint, but like most of the Super 7 figures, classics, and filmation, they can't look up and down. This is almost like springing back, and I did this in another toy review where... It, it won't it won't go up and down but uh we can 360 the head all the way around but maybe if i worked at it for a while but it's not really getting up and down which it, it, it kind of sucks his arm is the same it's the standard buck from all the uh master of the universe figures um from mattel or super seven the classics and the filmation like they just smoothed out some things for the filmation line but his arms come up this far he can rotate at the shoulder, complete 360. The arm is soft and it won't hinder the motion. He has a bicep swivel right here. Elbow bend. Not a whole lot of, out of that coming down to his wrist. He has a wrist swivel. And you can see the hinge in there where he can hinge in and hinge out. And that motion coming down, you can see that clearly see the ab crunch. We don't, I don't know how much the armor. Yeah, um, the armor is in the way a lot from this ab crunch you can get it to move but as, as you can see not much I'm not getting that much out of it but it's, it's in there his waist swivels 360s all the way around he has the ball joints at the top of the leg or or I think they're ball joints and a hinge inside the ball joint get him out this far he'll swivel at the top of the leg Coming to his knee, his knee comes up this far. I mean, it's the standard buck, but I'm going through it anyway. He has nothing at the boot or at the boot cut here at the calf. And coming down to his foot, he has a hinge here. And a little bit of a rocker. Yeah, he has some rocker in there. A little bit. And that's his articulation. Again, it's the standard Masters of the Universe articulation. And I'm going to get his sword out. This is the animation version of his sword. It has a bone at the bottom, and I'm assuming this is some more of some type of sea creature he drudged from the deep. And it even has like the little vintage toy line thing that secures it in his hand. I don't know what that's called to help to help the vintage toy lines hold their swords from and he holds his sword just fine. It fits in there with no problem. It's not about to fall out. So that's pretty cool. He has that. He has this little gun with this generic little gray paint job. Man, I mean, they, I think they took the cartoon simplicity a little bit too far. And, and I'm going to try his opposite hand, see if we can get it in this hand. As we know, it should most likely fit in his right hand. I just had the sword in there. All right, there it is. Got it in his hand. I wonder which episode this was from. I don't think it's from that episode. I don't think he had a gun on that episode. And here, next up, and last but not least, is his staff with the crimson pearl. And it, it would have been nice if they had put an actual little separate piece in there because you clearly see it's painted. The paint doesn't all doesn't go all the way to the spear tip. It would have been nice if they had a little red piece of plastic stuck in there. And we try to get this in his hand. And it fits kind of loosely. I'm pretty sure it's meant to be held at this thicker point here, at least in one hand. So I'm going to put it in this hand and try to grab the thicker part with his left hand to see if... Uh, he can hold it two-handed style and yep. Hey man, you will not stop the sacrifice without the crimson pearl. I can't control my cool. Yeah, I still, I still love doing merman and beachcomber from Transformers. Now to sacrifice Tila to the great Baku. Just a minute, fish face. Man, you just had to love 80s cartoons that taught us all how to call somebody out of their name like Fish Face, Snake Puss, Bonehead, uh, Fur Face, Laser Breath, Mega Mouth. 
and then spent the last, what, 30 seconds of the episode teaching us how to be fair and kind and love one another. Man, what a confusing and great time. Okay, while I'm posing this guy around, you can see his staff where the paint from his hand is coming off on it, which is just, just, just bugs the heck out of me. Why would you not make his hand the same color plastic as his chest? I know it's like a softer, more gummy plastic, but I mean, why not just pour the mold in, in the same color plastic instead of painting it, having the green and then painting over it? which it bugs the heck out of me because you can see a little bit of green inside his thumb. Then it looks like the hinge is a beige plastic and it's painted over and that's coming off, which I don't understand. I can see maybe the forearm right here because the the glove on the forearm because it's part of the forearm, maybe, but they could have made this an entire separate piece that pops out and had this completely painted. Same thing with the boots because moving it around, you're going to scuff it and scrape that off and then you're gonna see the ugly green when they could have just used that color plastic I hate when toy companies do that whether it's Super 7, Mattel, Hasbro the hands and feet when like they're wearing gloves or something like this should be a completely separate plastic okay now having harped on that I'm gonna bring out a little bit of comparison here is my Master of the Universe Classics Merman if you've seen any of my Master of the Universe reviews and you heard me say most of my guys are still in the packaging. They are. Here he is packaged with as close as they could get to the vintage head. And down here is an alternative head, which is from the original 8-back or concept merman head, which neither one looks like the cartoon. They totally went in a completely different direction for the cartoon. But this armor is killer, boy. That's like some sea creature bones and all of that. that that's really killer in there. And the sword. Oh, and let me see if I can show you... I know it's a rip off doing it like this, but the, these are the two swords in there. And, and this guy comes with no gun. He comes with the trident. And this guy comes with the staff and a gun. And to give another comparison, his fellow filmation and fellow green warrior, Triclops, side by side. So to wind down this toy review, his accessories are pretty cool. I think the pearl could have done, been done better. The sword is excellent. He's a pretty cool figure. The only problems I have is with uh, their decisions, not with how it came out to uh, paint the hands and feet as opposed to using plastic. And I had a little bit of the sloppy paint right there. But other than that, this guy is pretty cool. I'm happy to have it, happy to add it to my collection. So I am George 80 Transformer fan. Thank you for stopping by for my tour review, and I'll see you soon. Transform!